We got a screamer. Oh yeah, baby, look at that wahoo. Whoa, that's a winner. Nice fish, man. Hey guys, welcome back to Fish Story. I'm Salt Life team member Cameron Kirkconnell. Today we we're gonna talk about wahoo. Wahoo, also known as peto in some of the Spanish-speaking countries, and kingfish in some other areas, is the biggest that we usually encounter of the mackerel species. Probably the fastest, arguably, besides the sailfish. One of the best eating, hardest fighting, sharpest teeth. Wahoo is one of the most incredible fish in the ocean. In the winter months, around the full moon, these fish come together in big schools when you're fishing for them, if you hook one, you're likely to hook a couple of others. Summertime and other times of the year, those fish are mostly in singles and doubles, so it's not uncommon to only catch one sometimes in a whole day of fishing for them. You guys have met me, you know me by now. One of my favorite things to do is chase world records around the world. I've had 18 personally and I've taken clients to 30 now, and Wahoo has always been one of the records I really wanted. Personally, I've shot two Wahoo over 100 pounds. I shot a 101 pounder and a 119 pounder, which for reference is about this big around, so it's huge. The world record for spear fishing is 139 pounds. That fish is about this big around and about seven feet long. It looks like a cruise missile. The world record for fishing is 184 pounds, like almost seven and a half feet long and as big around as like a marlin or something. Just an absolutely massive fish. Wahoo are pelagic fish, which means they're covering ground, they're traveling all the time, and they're out in the blue water. So they don't live in one reef, they keep moving. They grow very fast, same as like the dolphin and the cobia that we've talked about, and they're constantly eating. Favorite stuff to eat? Basically any bait fish. Threadfin herring, little bonitas, little blackfin tunas, they'll eat mahi, they'll eat other mackerels, they'll eat anything they can chase down. Wahoo usually bite best at first light and depending on the area, the right tide. So in the Bahamas, they like a falling tide, which is bringing a lot of bait from the shallow water off the drop off and they're waiting right there. So when you're trolling, you're zigzagging from 150 feet out to 800 feet and back. And if that doesn't work, you just change your depths and zigzag until you find them and then just keep fishing for them. Wahoo range in depth from the surface down to 150, 200 feet sometimes. The majority of them are caught near the surface while trolling or live baiting to usually about 80 or 100 feet. When you hear people talk about fishing with wire line or downriggers or planers, usually they're talking about Wahoo fishing. Using those different types of techniques allow the baits to get deeper, 30, 40, 50 feet down and closer to where the Wahoo are. A lot of times when you're fishing a structure like a drop off or a, a shipwreck that's in deep water, you'll see a group of fish and on the depth quarter, it'll look like little half moon shapes. That's Wahoo. Kind of equally spaced together because they like to be about 10 or 15 feet apart. So techniques for fishing for Wahoo. There's two prime techniques, slow trolling and high speed trolling. High speed trolling was developed specifically to fish for Wahoo. Wahoo like to be on these long ledges, so in the Bahamas where there might be a 50 mile stretch where you think there's going to be these fish, by trolling at 13 to 18 miles an hour with big lures that are heavily weighted, 20 or 30 feet of line and then a, a weight allow you to cover a lot of ground and what people will do is put two to four lines out and they will run fast, 12, 14, 15, 18 miles an hour and they'll zigzag along the drop off and Wahoo can swim up to 50, 60 miles an hour, have no problem grabbing these lures. But by trolling so fast, it allows you to cover a lot of ground really quickly to find these fish that are congregated in one area that day. Once you find those fish, or if you have a smaller area that you're fishing like a shipwreck or an oil rig or a buoy, people that are targeting those kind of areas use what they call a shaky bait in Louisiana or a hard lure that is gonna dive. So those diving lures are gonna dive down 10, 15, 30 feet and swim like this, and you can go a lot slower, six, eight miles an hour, and the Wahoo just absolutely crush those things. 
when people are trolling, you gotta have wire. Because of these guys' teeth, you have to have wire or cable. They will cut you off every time if you don't. Heavy, heavy tackle, uh, 30 to 80 pound line and reels is ideal. Be ready for a battle. Their first run, they'll go so fast and so far, you'll think that you've hooked you know, a truck running the other way. And a lot of times with these fish, if you stop the boat, that first run, they're gonna take off really hard and stop and then run back towards the boat. So the line will go slack. Don't stop cranking. Crank, 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 reel as fast as you can because that fish is likely running for the boat and still on. That being said, always keep the boat in gear when you're fishing for water. It just keeps them coming straight, even with the high speed stuff. Pull it back to two, three, four knots as you're fighting them and just keep that fish straight behind the boat. They can be easily identified by a very dark blue back and beautiful stripes coming down their sides that are vertical, a very forked shaped tail like this, and a very pointy snout. When you look at them dead on, it looks like you're looking at the front of a pencil. And same, when you turn it from the side, they have a very pencil shaped mouth. Sometimes when you're, they're swimming, they'll have their mouth open a little bit. And one cool thing about these guys is the way that their jaws come together is like a pair of scissors. Instead of coming together like that, they cut like scissors. These are one of the most dangerous of all fish, but not while they're in the water. People get hurt by these fish a lot after they've caught them, after they've been in the cooler, and they put them on the deck or they drop them while they're messing with them, and that scissor-like mouth, those teeth that are there are super sharp, and if they slide into you and barely touch you, they're gonna cut you like someone cuts you with a scalpel. You gotta be really careful these fish, even after they're in the boat and in the ice and everything like that. Be careful. So many people have had to go to the hospital because they got hurt by these things. The best season for Wahoo is winter time, personally. I like that because they're in big groups and they're usually oriented around structure. There's a lot of places in the world you can fish for them. It's the same species around the world, so I'll dive here in the US and the Bahamas during our winter time, and then when it's summer here, I'll travel to the South Pacific or the Indian Ocean to chase them there during that time. Wahoo are one of the best eating of all fish in the world. They have beautiful white meat, and you should immediately start taking care of them as soon as you catch them. Put them on ice, let that ice stay on them for six to eight hours, get nice and cold, fillet them out. After you've filleted them, you can eat these fish in almost any way. My favorite is sashimi or sushi. The meat is so good, the only way you can mess this stuff up is by overcooking it. Wahoo has a tendency to dry out, so if you're gonna try to fry it or cook it on the grill, barely cook it and it'll cook the rest of the way through very, very quickly. Think of it as one of your best steaks. You wanna just barely sear the outside, flip it over, sear the other side, and leave it like that. One of the best eating fish, I cannot stress that enough. Thank you guys for joining Fish Story with Cameron Kirkconnell and the Salt Life team. Would love to have you guys subscribe. We'll see you here next time.